Hello everyone and welcome, this is Federico. Today I'll be presenting to you this uh, paper, Fundamental Trade-offs Between Invariance and Sensitivity to Adversarial Perturbations. Um, now this is my 10th video and I'm quite excited. Um, I would like to just invite you to, uh, if you found this paper interesting, to start discussions in the comments section and maybe share it. The idea is that we can all uh, learn from each other and uh, yeah, maybe there will be some cool points in, in the discussion. Now this is a uh, ICML 2020 paper, if I'm not mistaken, by Florian Trammer, Jens Bar Barman, Berman, Nicolas Carlini, Nicolas Papernot, Jorn Henrik Jakobsen. Cool. And this paper is actually quite uh, interesting because uh, it's, uh, it's addressing a problem which is uh, quite usually overlooked. And it's the fact that, uh, yes, we can... Uh, be very robust to certain kind of adversarial examples but then we have shortcomings in in the other ones necessarily and we have to kind of evaluate again these trade-offs between uh, invariance and sensitivity to perturbations so i mean the title explains it <laughs> quite well um, so again adversarial examples are malicious uh, inputs crafted to induce misclassification um, you can feel free to check out the other videos i have on adversarial examples um, because this obviously assumes that we know what we're talking about. Um, commonly studied sensitivity-based adversarial examples introduce semantically small changes to a, an input that result in a different model prediction. Um, while this paper studies invariance-based adversarial examples, uh, which um, which are kind of the opposite. So um, small ch semantically um, semantic changes that modify an input's true label, yet preserves the model's prediction. Again. Uh, this this points out quite quite obviously that like or quite um, explicitly that there's a lot of work done on these sensitivity based adversarial examples, but these other invariance based are kind of less cool. Um, but but the two are actually extremely intimately connected as you would expect. Um, so we demonstrate fundamental trade offs between these two types, and uh, we show that defenses against sensitivity based so the first type uh, actively harm a model's accuracy and invariance based. So, and new approaches are needed to resist both attack types. Um, so in particular, we break state of the art adversarial trained uh, models. Okay, so again, this is quite an interesting point. And this first diagram kind of brings the point home. I think Th this is kind of the diagram you want to be looking at. And uh, let's maybe go through it. So we have this point, uh, a three, which is right here. And then we have a five here. Now, if we have an unrobust decision boundary, maybe let's read the, um, okay, anyway. The, so this is an unrobust decision boundary, right? It's just kind of learned to um, um, to distinguish the two points during training time, while this robust training boundary is actually looking at these epsilon sized uh, LP balls uh, around these points and trying to actually avoid them, right? Um, and uh, if we have this point of a five um, with this uh, unrobust, um, let's say these are this is classification for three and this is for five. Also here, this is a three and a five. Um, now, actually, the unrobust model will be um, correctly classifying this point, while the robust model, which is robust to sensitivity-based adversarial perturbations will actually classify this as a three because it's kind of over, over, overly robust. And uh, while the actual kind of uh, semantic, um, so it's, yeah, it's overly robust in this space, but while um, you can apply small perturbations and actually land in, in an adversarial pocket, right? Which is within the, the epsilon size ball. Okay. So this is, and the idea is that this uh, black line here is the oracle, so like the true label, right? So ideally, what we want, obviously, is to have a boundary which matches as closely as possible as this oracle, and uh, and then we'll we'll go through it. Uh, th there's actually some definitions, and then it turns out that obviously um, matching the oracle exactly is well, we all know it's impossible, right? Um, so it's an unsolved problem, and. Um, yeah, okay. Um, okay, let's go through it. Um, and here we have the kind of mathematical definition and you can see very clearly the difference. So given a classifier F and a correctly classified input, 
um, an epsilon bounded sensitivity adversarial example is an input uh, x star such that so again we have this uh, epsilon ball um, and we are finding a, a point within the epsilon ball that's misclassified so we want that the classification of f of x is uh, is different from f of x star and that this is bounded by some p norm um, um, within epsilon right so this is an epsilon bounded adversary sensitivity adversarial example um, the assumption is that uh, we have an extra point that uh, the oracle's labeling of the original input is preserved so if we have this oracle function uh, we we have that obviously we want the oracle to have the same like the, we want the two points to have the same kind of semantic meaning right and there's ways to optimize it um, to find these points such as uh, optimizing for this loss function right or sorry um, this is um, to increase the robustness so um, if we want to make this classifier more robust we can actually just optimize uh, for this loss function and it will make it more robust so, so what we're doing is uh, is kind of creating these pockets, uh, these uh, balls around these points to kind of make them more, um, more robust. Yeah. Um, now the the problem is that if we have these pockets, it's not necessarily true that there's a mapping, and in fact, it we can almost say that it won't be true um, that um, the norm because th these balls are based on a norm, right? Because obviously, if we have points, um, norms will differ right so we could have like i guess this is a, a max norm uh, and then we could have like a euclidean norm right they will have different shapes and what we want is that these shapes are um are um looking at, actually give semantic meaning have a semantic meaning in the space right because if if we can obvious if we can give these norms a really strong semantic meaning that's actually really close to to the actual pixels and whatever, then then these norms do make sense and robustness does make sense. But since they do not match, because in, in pixels, I mean, this this is a well-studied line of work that um, including this, like LP norms are not actually really good at saying how different the image, how actually different two images are between each other, then we have a problem. Um, so again, this optimization works, but is, is not, the best thing we can do it works obviously but it, w it will fail against these invariance adversarial attacks and invariance adversarial attacks uh, quite instead of here having an inequality we want the classifier to give the two points the same prediction while the oracle uh, mismatches them and also uh, the oracle doesn't uh, this is their sign for like a rubbish prediction so like uh, maybe we have an open set classifier which like uh, says okay don't trust this point or whatever I mean this is more of a formality but anyway um, we want the classifier to give the same prediction to two points while the oracle mismatch miss or I guess gives a different prediction well here's the opposite way around we want the classifier to um, to give different predictions to the two points but the oracle says they're the same like semantically it's the same label to the two points um, yeah so this is the idea and uh, and we can also maybe look at some more of the mathematical dis discussion um so if we let this distance be an rd by rd to our measure so we could say like a metric um so for example the norm of x1 minus x2 so yeah a metric um so we say that the distance function is metric is aligned with the oracle if for any input x with label y and any input x1 with label y and x2 with label not y, we have that distance to to the point x and x1 is um, is less than the distance x to x2. So what we're saying is we want points with the same label um, to be closer than points. Uh, I guess this is like implying for any x1 and x2. Right. So we want all points with which are the same label as another class to have the same distance metric as uh, or to be less with respect to the distance metric to points with different class. So what we're saying is, um, you know, we have points in space. Right. And then this, let's say, is one class and then we have different points. We want them to be kind of grouped up such that uh, they're well separated and um, 
and this way we we what we say is that um that this distance function is aligned okay and now <laughs> what they say here constructing an oracle line distance function that satisfies the definition uh is as hard as construction a function f such that it matches the oracle so again this is the idea that if we because okay this is a this is maybe a bit misleading because instead what we what we're saying is uh, let's say we have this uh, these points which are like in two-dimensional space right um and then we have these other points which can be like mixed actually right what we want is if we're mapping them to the real numbers what we want is these red ones to be like well separated like this right um okay i won't do it for all because then it gets messy but this is the idea this is this transformation is the dist function right and we want them to be separated so that the red ones end up like here and then the black ones end up like here and what we're saying is that having a metric because obviously this um would mean that indeed yes we can make we can optimize with respect to this problem and then um find a very useful um kind of robustness like, like give it strong robustness but then we're saying that this problem of, of having this this of constructing this distance function such that it follows the oracle in a way it is is obviously as hard as finding the oracle so well this is quite an obvious remark but um quite a an important one we're saying we're pretty much screwed <laughs> and uh, there's no way around it because what we need to do in this case is to actually solve the classification problem perfectly to to be able to to do this um okay and then now uh, we get to the point of their um how do we actually find these invariance based adversarial samples and we do it um quite in a caveman way i guess this is a bit more tricky to do um but pretty much what we do is we have um, we construct a set s of points uh which are which have a different label than um than the point we want to find this invariance based sample for and then we have these semantic based transformations uh which are in this family t pardon the dog um which are in this family t and we want to um <coughs> We want to to apply these um, semantic preserving transformations to this point x. So we're saying, okay, these points will keep the same label, and then we want to minimize uh, this quantity here, right? Because that's, I mean, that's the whole point. We want to find the smallest adversarial point, um, and yeah. So this is um, quite like a straightforward approach. So again, this is like maybe explained a little better. Given an input x, the tax goals to find the smallest class changing perturbation such that it's um, the oracle mismatches them, right? But uh, the, um, or it says the oracle says that they're different while the classifier says that they're the same. Typically, x star is not a part of the data set. We just approximate x star the semantics preserving transformations of other inputs. So for the set, because uh, so for the set s of inputs of a different class in x, we apply transformations that are known a priori to preserve input labels. We then pick the transformed input that is closest to a target point under the considered LP metric. And um, yeah, so obviously the idea is that also um, we need human uh, like to to measure these attack success. Uh, we need like humans to actually go in and, and say okay. So, so we refer to an inverse, invariance adversarial example successful if it co if it causes a change in the oracle's label. Um, so in practice, we simulate the oracle by asking an ensemble of humans to label it, and then if uh, seventy percent uh, agree on the label, and it's not the original label, then it's successful. Okay, um, and then we see that as we expect, um, we can uh, if this epsilon grows we can actually become quite uh, quite successful at this and then again this is like i think their automated attack and then this is their manual attack um and uh, and their manual attack is obviously much more i guess the manu the automated attacks are not as um kind of well well formed and well studied because this is quite a new problem i guess that they're uh, putting forward so their their manual attacks show that up to 88% on a on a 0 
L max uh, ball. Um, I mean, that, that's quite significant. And uh, we can see, maybe let me zoom in a bit more. Um, here we can see the original ones. Um, here we can see our, this is L0, L max at 0 0.3. And then this is uh, L max at uh, 0 0.4. Um, so, and then these are failed attacks, right? So these are the successful attacks. As you can see, this is one turning clearly into a seven, into a seven, into a seven. This is four turning into a nine, into a nine. I mean, this one is maybe more questionable. I may, I maybe still would say it's a four. Um, but maybe I guess this one is actually turned into a one <laughs> now that I look about it. But okay, this is maybe a bit more borderline. These are clearly nines, right? Um, this is clearly a seven. This is clearly a seven, clearly a seven. This two turning into a seven. This two turning in again into a seven. Maybe this is more borderline. This is more borderline. Um, this seven into twos, you know. So And then here there's fail attacks. So these are keeping the same label. I mean, maybe this one would be more four again. They are quite tricky <laughs> to actually say, okay, which one is like what, like how to give the actual label. Of it. But again, this is like the point. It's it's hard to. Well, this is also why it's hard to generate them because it's 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 actually hard to <laughs> to actually say is this a successful attack. Um, but I mean, they just said their way to measuring it was just okay. Let's say if if seventy percent agree in a label and it's different, then it's it's uh, it worked. So yeah, and then there's more um, uh, more stuff on the paper which I won't go over, but uh, maybe the conclusion I thought I can't remember. Um, our maybe let's read the discussion. So our results show that solely focusing on robustness to sensitivity-based attacks is insufficient. Um, so our invariance attacks are able to find points within LP ball, which state-of-the-art classifiers are provably robust. So they're finding they're attacking robust models. This is the whole point of this. We can attack robust models by just thinking a little differently. And then there's obviously this trade between uh, sensitivity and invariance. Again, this is maybe more clear from the diagram is that we kind of need to, um, we need to, if we're overly, um, so I guess here we, this diagram is quite crucial. If we're overly robust, we'll have pockets which are, uh, which are, you know, not robust to to so if th this is an excessively invariant model we are um we're we're actually um attackable in these pockets here while here this is an ex excessively sensitive models and again we're attackable in these pockets here or sorry um yeah you get the point so um one robustness if it's not traded off with the other will cause issues and, and this is what maybe new line of work will go into, trying to make them both um, sensitive, like robust to sensitivity based attacks and uh, robust to invariant based attacks. And uh, and maybe, just maybe, if we kind of get a good trade off between the two, we can actually get closer to this Oracle based decision boundary. And uh, this also relies again on this fact that we want to to become better at guessing this distance metric, right? Because we want to create this mapping uh, and make it um, make it better. Yeah. So again, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to um, share it and and you know tell me in the comments that you enjoyed it, so I can make more and be more motivated. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it.